Hello, I'm Dean McDonald with Tech Skills. In this video, I will discuss setting up your work area using some basic tools and peripheral devices that you may need as you practice working on computers. Then I will demonstrate connecting the basic peripheral devices to your computer, showing you how to boot it up and test it to make sure everything's working. Let's go ahead and get started. The best way to learn how to work on computers is actually by working on them. These computers do not necessarily need to be functioning for you to be able to practice with them. As you learn about the components and become more comfortable working on them, you can use your skills to troubleshoot these non-working computers and hopefully swap some parts in and out of the broken machines and make one or two working computers from these components. I recommend that you try to collect a few old, broken, or even working computers to practice with. It should be pretty easy to find a few old working machines or even some non-working ones. A few places I obtain free computers from are my local newspaper and the free want ads as well as craigslist.org and freecycle.org. They generally have them in large major cities. Once you have some computers to work on, you need a place to work and you need some tools and peripheral devices to be able to work on them. Not all of the devices that I'll describe here are essential. Some are nice to have and if you happen to come across them, but this may give you some ideas on the types of things that you may want to have near your workbench. Of course, first off, we're going to have our anti-static measures. In this case, we have an anti-static mat and strap. You'll also need to provide power for your computers. I recommend using a grounded surge protector. This will prevent damage to my devices if there happens to be an electrical surge. I like to put mine right on the desk so I have easy access to it. If you don't have a surge protector, you can use a power strip but just be warned that power strips do not provide any surge protection. Next you need some sort of monitor. I happen to have an LCD monitor which takes up a little bit less space than a larger CRT or cathode ray tube monitor. But you should be able to pick up a 15 or 17 inch monitor relatively cheap. You may even find some free on Craigslist or FreeCycle. You'll need a keyboard and mouse. You may want to have both a PS2, which is this style, and a USB or you can use what I use is a USB with a PS2 adapter. So this allows my USB keyboard or mouse, I just put this adapter on, and then I can use either or. You never know what the laptop or computer you're working on, what type of ports they're going to have, so it's always good to have some options. At a minimum, you should have a Phillips screwdriver. You should also have a slotted screwdriver. I like to use this one. This one has one on either side. So pretty much with this device right here, I can open most every computer. I also recommend using a screwdriver that's not magnetized. That means it doesn't have a magnetized tip. Although it's nice for picking up screws, that magnetized tip can ruin integrated chips or other components. I like to have a couple of small plastic containers for holding the screws. Some compartmentalized ones are nice. So this allows you to, as you're pulling screws and other components out of a computer, putting them in these little plastic containers so they're not rolling all over the desk. For cleaning inside the computer, I generally use canned or compressed air. It's relatively cheap and it definitely does a good job. For cleaning outside of the computer, I like a lint-free cloth. Old t-shirts work great. They're generally soft enough and they don't have a lot of lint. You may need to use warm water. Sometimes you can use some cleaning liquids like 409 or other surface cleaners but I would only use that on the outside of the computer, never on the inside. For cleaning smaller parts like case fans and grills, I like to use cotton balls, cotton swabs, and these little plastic toothpicks are nice. They're strong enough to be able to scrape some things, but they're soft enough not to damage anything. I also keep a little vial or a little film canister full of warm water. That helps for cleaning some of those nasty things. These little tools will really get into those hard to reach areas. To test that a computer is working, I will connect the basic peripheral devices, keyboard, the mouse, power cord, and a monitor, and verify that the computer boots up and is functioning properly. The first component that I'll connect is the keyboard. In this case, I'm using a USB keyboard. It has this square connector on it. Plug that into one of the USB ports. The next device that I'll connect is my PS2 mouse. Notice that this mouse is green. Also have a green connector on the motherboard. Also have a little indicator here to show that this is for the mouse. Not all computer manufacturers and peripheral manufacturers use green for the mouse, 
but it's almost becoming a standard where most device manufacturers and motherboard manufacturers will use a green PS2 connector for the mouse and a on this side a purple one to indicate that it's a keyboard. Next I connect the monitor to the video card. In this case I have a blue connector has 15 pins on it and this will connect into the video card or the video adapter which has 15 holes has a D-shaped connector so this can only go in one way so I'll connect that. Video connectors generally have these thumb screws so the thumb screws will allow me to tighten this up so the video connector does not come loose sometimes a loose connector will make the video color change so you want to make sure that these are nice and tight so the video card and the video connector do not come loose. The last item that I'm connect is the power cord in this case I'm going to use the D-shaped power connector has three holes in it two holes for power one hole for ground D-shaped connector that can only go in one way I generally will flip the power switch and make sure it's in the off position if it does have a power switch plug the power then I'll turn the power supply in the on position most of the computer cases will have a power switch on the front this just has the main power going to our power supply I'll flip that on first and then we can turn on the computer with the power cord and peripheral devices connected, I can turn on the computer and verify that it boots properly. A couple of things that I'll look for is to make sure I get video. This tells me that the motherboard, the power supply, the video card, the RAM, and the CPU are all functioning. If I get video, that's a good sign. I'll also listen for the BIOS. The BIOS will make one beep if it goes through the power on self test and it has a positive test. So those are the, some of the things that I'll listen for and I'll look for to make sure that the computer boots properly. So I push the power button on the front of the computer, listen for that beep, there it is, and I'll watch for video on my monitor. As you can see, I got a little video there, it's going through the power on self-test. This computer does have windows on it, so it should boot into the Windows boot screen. There it is. So now I know that I'm dealing with a functioning computer. Power supply is working, it's supplying power, I can hear the fan is on. I'm getting video and obviously booting to the operating system so I know the hard drive is working. So these are some things to look for as you boot up. Now if your computer is not working, this is where you can start your troubleshooting, figure out what's working and what's not working. In this video I described a few places where you can find free or inexpensive computers and components. I also described a few tools and peripheral devices you may want to have near your workbench. Good luck getting your computers together and setting up your workbench. Thanks for watching.